All right, so one of the things that I... I'm going to get you into the part where we're actually doing the drawing, but I need to introduce you to some concepts. And one of these things is the idea of, people say, drawing in three dimensions. And I'm using a program called Marmoset Hexels, and I'm going to use this to show you isometric perspective. So there's this... This program, we're not using exactly real perspective, but it is useful for saying, hey, look, we can make something that looks three-dimensional. It looks three-dimensional. We can make like a wall that goes this way, and I can probably even, here, let's turn this into an arrow. Let's make it, uh, here, let's draw like that. And let's erase that, and... So I'm now pointing in that direction. And in fact, I think another thing I could do is let's say our light is coming um, more or less from top down. So I'm going to just dim that down. There we are. And that means I'll have to dim this down by about two levels and we'll keep that nice and bright. So actually, why don't I just draw a cube? Here we are. Draw that in red. And I'll use the line tool. Yeah. All right, so this is a really neat program in that I can make it look like, whoops, that's the wrong tool. I can make that sidewall and then let's just use red the whole time. We'll do a top surface here. Right, so we get this feeling that the, the surface turns. Really cool program. And then maybe I'll just make it even darker. So that side is really dim now. Right, so you can see how we've got these three different faces all facing out different directions. And you've got these different edges here and... I'm going to introduce you to Cartesian coordinates. So Cartesian coordinates kind of works like this. You've got these different axes. You have a Y axis, which points straight up into the sky, goes up that way. We have a Z axis or a Z axis, which points maybe this way. And then you also have an X axis, which points out that way. All right, so you've got these three dimensions and you can you can tell like if you want to get a three-dimensional coordinate then what happens is you can say something is maybe this far over in the x-axis and then we can say it's this far over in the z-axis or z-axis and it's this far up in the y-axis right and so we can we can choose a point that is hovering high in the air and it's it's moved over from the world center at the origin all right so there's this concept of working in three dimensions of moving in one dimension another two dimensions three dimensions the three-dimensional maneuver now i want to close this program and show you in just a regular drawing program here we go some three-dimensional drawing these are done using pretty much that same concept so if i wanted to i can Take a line, we're going to start on the ground plane, right? And I can say, I'm going to move this line. I'm, I'm axial align. I'm performing an axially aligned movement, right? So that first line is aligned like that. This one is going up in the Y axis. This is moving over in the X axis, moving down in the Y axis, moving in the Z axis. And so that is what you can do with isometric drawing. Isometric drawing allows you. Now, when it comes to real perspective, there's this little thing that goes on. Like with isometric perspective, you're just going to keep using the exact same coordinates. And you know what? Nothing wrong with drawing entirely in isometric perspective. You can do that, and you just, there's no vanishing points or anything. 
and you can just keep doing this, right? And you can draw things in isometric perspective all you want. The nice thing that's about doing this is that it's always going to be three-dimensional. But if you want to start to get this feeling of things turning, then one thing that there's one thing that happens, and that is there's a bit of a kind of a rotation that occurs. So in this case, rather than drawing a whole box, I'm just going to have you draw these little planes. And you'll notice one thing I don't do is I don't try to draw the whole freaking thing in one line. All right? Don't do that. And the reason I'm going to tell you not to do it is it's hard to control. The pen, working with a pen does this. It's like you're performing relative maneuvers, relative movements. So when you draw curves like this, this is a relative maneuver or relative movement. It's like if I try to draw a really, really straight line from this side, you know, all the way to the other side, well, you can, you can see from my grid thing, oh, there's like a whole lot of drift here, right? Whereas if I were to draw like this, I can do little pieces and, hey, that line can be straight and that line can be straight and that line can be straight. Each time I use, every time I place a dot, I'm always making sure that that dot is aligned with the very first one. So yeah, your line quality goes to hell, but the placement is more important. All right? It's like if you're parking a car. If you're parking a car, yeah, it's okay if you're a little shaky going in and out and your movement, you know, you're not doing it all in one smooth movement, but as long as your placement's good and you don't ding any other cars, it's fine. Right. You'll get better at line placement. You'll, you'll get faster later on. But as a beginner, just just take line quality and just throw it out. Just put it in the back of your mind. And instead, you're going to use absolute positioning. And that means placing dots in absolute positions, exactly where you want them to go. What you don't do is you don't try to draw the whole thing. And usually what happens is when people draw, they tend to drift, right? Their lines don't reach the target. So you need to absolutely position your targets. Always use absolute targeting for your line like this. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, but Mark, I have to think more. I have to think more and it doesn't feel natural. And it's like, it's harder. It feels strange and weird and, and you know, like I can't, well, okay. All right. So the thing is that it's a trade-off. You're making a sacrifice. All right. Now the concept of a sacrifice is not you give something up for nothing and you get nothing in return. What you get is, yeah, it's taking a little extra energy from you. It's taking some effort from you, but you know what you're getting in return? The lines are going where you fucking want them to go. That's what you get. That's what you get. You get lines that go where you want them to go. And that means that a line that goes where you want it to go is a line you don't have to undo. It's a line you don't got to erase. And you know what really takes a lot of effort more than, more than trying to, you know, like draw these individual points is undoing and having to draw the line again and again and having to erase the fucking thing and having your drawing look all messy from all the eraser smudge marks because it looks like crap because, you know, you put all these mistakes all over it. So stop it. Just stop it. Just place dots where you know the lines should go. And if it's a really, really long line, if it's a really long distance and you know, maybe you just don't feel like that, that, you know, exactly like if it's a curve, let's say it's a curve, then what you can do is you can put multiple dots and you can just, you can just take it slow. Just take, you know, one little piece at a time. All right. When you draw a line, you know, past a certain point, it's, you're not, it's not going to feel like it's going to start, you're going to start losing control of it. It's going to start drifting. It's going to start drifting out of your control. And the other thing is that look at how I move my, my arm, right? I move my whole arm, right? I don't, I don't do this, right? Because the problem is that this is only capable of a little short movement. So, I mean, okay, maybe you've got a handicap and you can only do that. All right. So fine. But at least this way, you can take the drawing in small pieces. You can take that long curve and you can break it up into lots and lots of little precise pieces. You get so much more control. So yeah, you're sacrificing 
line quality, but you gain control. You gain all those lines will go exactly where you want them to go. So yeah, this is this is what you're gonna do now. Is you're gonna do Cartesian movements. All of your lines when you're drawing boxes, right? I can drag up. I'm gonna come forward. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go you know over in another in the um, Z plane axis. And this is another neat thing, right? Is that you can just practice moving in Cartesian planes, just one unit at a time. I'm gonna cross through here. And just keep building up something. So every single one of your lines is this is going in a direction in space. It's going, you know, back, going to the side. And if you want to make, if you're looking for an even greater challenge, then you're going to do something like this. You're going to figure out how to finish the object off and make it look like it's like a Tetris piece, right? So it doesn't have to be just a rectangle box. It can be something like this. It can be pieces and you can gradually start trying to say, all right, I'm gonna ex start extruding these objects out. Yeah, it's gonna be a little wibbly wobbly, but that's all right as long as you keep correcting yourself right, and keep building with little, these, these voxels. You're, you're, this is voxel building. Right. And you know, try to make stuff like this. These are all voxel voxel made. Like working in Minecraft. Right. So try that. Try this out. Remember what I always say, if you can't do it, you don't know it. Right? You have to you have to do it. You have to do it. And yes, I know it's a lot of work, right? But that's the price. You're paying something. You're gonna you don't get things for free. Nothing in the world's free. A skill and the ability to do a thing. Nothing's free. Right? So if you want to be able to do it, then you gotta do it. And if you want to be able to do something really, really well, then you gotta do it until it feels like comfortable. It feels you know, it feels like uh you feel confident. And it doesn't feel strange. It's got to feel familiar, like walking or taking a piss and not missing the toilet. Okay? Anyway, that's it for that one. So, yeah, 3D drawing. Go for it.